Serving the internet. Coca-Cola picks AI over Web3, and I agree. A new business model saves the planet. The easiest social media strategy for small business and how to split test ads on LinkedIn. It's Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. Let's nerd out. Nerds Podcast. The Ad Nerds Podcast delivers ad industry news every weekday. We're the go-to source for people who spend money on advertising, covering big brands, small businesses, and the latest marketing trends. It's me, Spanky Moskowitz, the show's host and a nearly 40-year veteran of the ad industry. I've created campaigns for Budweiser, M&M's, Frito-Lay, the NFL, and NBA. I've created over 100,000 ads, generating hundreds of billions in client revenue. If you're in or interested in the world of advertising and want to stay up to date with the latest news, the Ad Nerds Podcast is the place to start. Ad Nerds Podcast. And I'm going to start by being fair. Yesterday, I crapped on the new Link, uh, Lipton hot hard tea ad. Sorry, I'm thinking hot tea. I'm like, oh, I need a hot tea. Um, I was brutally honest about how much I disliked their entire campaign. Now, the campaign launched uh, in select markets around the U.S., and they plan on scaling the campaign in 2024 nationwide. And I made a bold prediction that they're going to pivot before this time before 2024 before they burn through their budget because the entire campaign sucks so to be fair i'm going to share with you one of the ads i didn't do it yesterday i chose not to play the ad and i chose not to play the ad because it sucked that badly but i'm going to play one of them and then i will let you decide and you can comment either on the podcast, you can, you know, if you listen to it on Spotify or Apple, right? Spotify, you can comment. You can actually leave me voice comments and you can also comment on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at ad nerds. So here is of the ads that are in the campaign, what I consider the best of the ads and it still sucks. Do you think the boss likes that I replaced his chair with a mechanical ball? Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously. A tomato hard iced tea? Obviously. That looks refreshing. Obviously. Cool. America's favorite tea made a hard iced tea? Obviously. Introducing Lipton hard iced tea with 5% alcohol. Your cup of hard tea. Like I said, that was the best of the ads in the campaign. And so... I would love to know your thoughts on this. Since I crapped all over it yesterday, it is your turn to beat me up and disagree. Or if you think that this is pretty bad, go go find the rest of the ads yourself. They're terrible. Like I would never, ever make a campaign that looks anything like that. Ad Nerds Podcast. Did you know that we throw away 12 million tons of furniture in the U.S. every year? That's a ton of wasted furniture. Actually, 12 tons, because I just said 12 tons. Well, now brands like Kayo and Furnish are stepping up to tackle the problem and make furniture more sustainable. Okay, here's the problem. A lot of furniture ends up in landfills because it's not easy to recycle. You know, the materials that they use to make furniture, upholstery treatments, um, the design, it makes it really challenging to repurpose or dispose of furniture properly. But these brands are finding ways to make a difference. Let's start with Kayo. They're a full service resale marketplace and they make it really easy for you to sell your furniture instead of tossing it. And so they come to your place, they pick up the furniture, they clean it up, they take photos and they list it for sale. Uh, They deliver to to buyers in cities like New York, LA, San Diego. Um, So I think it's only in major metro areas right now. And it may be beyond that. But by doing this, they've already saved over 5 million pounds of furniture from ending up in landfills. Now, Furnish, on the other hand, focuses on the hassle of moving furniture. And they understand that young professionals often have to relocate for jobs and lugging furniture can be a real pain. So Furnish offers furniture rental services. Now, this is not an RTO. Okay, there are lots of RTO companies. This is not a rent to own. You simply choose the style you like, high quality furniture, and you pay a monthly fee to rent it. They deliver it, they assemble the furniture for you, and when they're done, they take it back, fix it up, and rent it to someone else. 
they've already saved over 2 million pounds of furniture from going to waste. Now, big brands are jumping into this. IKEA has joined the movement, and they launched a buyback and resale program where you could bring your old IKEA furniture back to the store and get store credit in return. And they have collected thousands of items and giving them a second life. Um, you got to understand, though, for these circular furniture efforts to have a real impact, though, they need to be both financially beneficial, viable, and environmentally beneficial. It's, it's the, the real task is coming up with the incentives for consumers to choose sustainable options and demand durable furniture that's going to last a long time rather than just chucking something in the trash. You know, you got to think about upcycling instead. Coming up, what a content strategy. What content strategy does your small business do right now? What is the easiest thing for you to execute? I'll tell you next. The most nerdy. It's time for an Ad Ad Nerds podcast. Gurus talk about what they did. Durus talk about what they're doing. And what I'm doing is going to change your business. I'm not a guru, I'm a duru. I eat, breathe, and sleep branding, advertising, and marketing. What I like to call BAM. Thank you, Emeril Lagasse, by the way. If you're a small business owner and you wish you had access to someone who could be your go-to, your duru, check out Marketology and the BAM League. I just launched my new community where I'm bringing my decades of experience working with big brands, consulting small businesses, and generating hundreds of billions in client revenue to work for you. And to make it affordable for everyone, it's just 87 bucks a month. Go to BAMLeague.com. That's B-A-M League.com for Marketology and the BAM League. Ad Nerds Podcast. Ad Nerds Podcast. All right, small business owners, I'm one of you. You know that. Small business owners struggle with creating a sustainable social media strategy. And yesterday, my friend Pamela dropped by the office and we got into a deep discussion about this topic. Right now, she feels like she's failing at social media and her business right now feels like it needs uh, a social media strategy. That's what she thinks. And I know this pain because I've thought it at times. I think we all do at one time or another. Am I right? So I shared some thoughts with her during our conversation and I want to share them with you too. No, I didn't record our conversation, but I want to share with you some practical, tactical thoughts. Go deep on a single platform and use tools to simplify it. So as an example, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, I film every episode of the Ad Nerds podcast. I have two Sony ZV-1 cameras, one on my left, one on my right, recording everything. And when I'm done, the video goes to YouTube. The audio goes to Spotify for you to hear and Otter for a verbatim transcription. Once the video is on YouTube, I go to a paid tool that I like called video.ai. That's V-I-D-Y-O dot A-I. V-I-D-Y-O dot A-I. And I give it the link to the video. It watches the video and it finds key moments or clips for use on social media. Then it outputs them in 16.9, which is the traditional landscape, 1.1 or square, and 9 by 16 for vertical video. Then it's simply a matter of uploading it to the platform of your choice, right? It doesn't matter if you're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. It doesn't matter. Okay, I know you're saying you don't have a podcast right now. That's fine. You don't need a podcast to do this. Grab a, grab a camera like the Sony ZV-1. You, you find your, whatever camera you like. Put it on a tripod with a good mic, preferably a Rode, R-O-D-E, really good mic so you don't have to have a, a mic a wireless mic on you at all times and then film what you're doing in your business are you a barber record cutting hair you make pizza for a living record it you style outfits at a boutique fine film it then you're documenting you're not creating documenting is a lot easier by the way thank you gary v for that it doesn't need a script or your time because you're already doing the thing you do. It makes it easy when you're documenting. Then drop it into a tool like video.ai and see what you get as a start. Remember, you don't need to do all the crazy graphics at first. Start with what you can do. There are days where I post to TikTok and I don't hashtag shit. Don't beat yourself up over it because 
even though you know you should, at least you got the content up. The best strategy is to put content out there. Don't get stuck in your head about what to put out there. And once you get the habit in motion, it will get easier. Finally, I coined this phrase about six years ago, and now people hit me in the face with it when I get stuck on something. And here it is. Version one is better than version none. Remember that anytime you get stuck, version one is better than version none. Global drink giant Coca-Cola is placing its bets on AI over Web3 tech. That's right. Pradik Thakar, Thakar, head of creative strategy and integrated content at Coca-Cola, believes that while the initial excitement around Web3 technologies like NFT and the metaverse um, was really cool, AI is the technology that's going to have a lasting impact on the landscape of the marketplace. He thinks AI is more practical and applicable for daily use compared to Web3. I couldn't agree more. Like, I use AI daily. Web3 stuff, eh, you know, once every couple of months. So he said you can perform stuff with AI, like open AI, every day. Whereas he wouldn't be doing crypto trading or spending hours in the metaverse on a daily basis. Again, same here. Coca-Cola has already embraced AI in its marketing efforts. They launched an AI-centric campaign called Create Real Magic, which allowed consumers to use AI-generated artwork using Coca-Cola's visual assets. And the campaign was super engaging. Consumers spent an average of seven minutes on the platform and created 120,000 different images. He emphasized the importance of engaging consumers through AI and leveraging their creativity to strengthen the brand's marketing. He also went on to highlight the significance of connecting innovative technologies like AI with existing marketing strategies such as out-of-home displays or influencer partnerships. And while the car agreed uh, or acknowledged the value of the metaverse in offering like this immersive experience and, and helping to build online communities, he really advised brands to prioritize AI over situational technologies like the metaverse or NFTs. AI already has practical application and is readily available, unlike the metaverse, which is still like in version one development. Uh, By the way, Coca-Cola has explored NFTs as a way to connect with collectors of uh, physical and digital Coca-Cola products. But again, he thinks AI is far more practical and brands can activate AI really, really easily. Coming up, LinkedIn launched a new tool that makes it easy to split test your ads. I'll tell you how to use it next. The most dirty. It's time for it. I have been in the ad game for almost 40 years, but I am a small business owner just like you. Getting great creative at an affordable price is a challenge. Correction, was a challenge. It's time to tap into the brain power of ad zombies. We're your creative business partner, crafting attention-grabbing, mind-blowing, ridiculously creative ad campaigns, outdoor video and jingles. Ad agencies around the world use us and you can too. If you're ready for your advertising to make an impact, go to adzombies.com today. Ad Zombies, ridiculously creative advertising. Ad Nerds Podcast. Ad Nerds Podcast. Are you using LinkedIn as part of your sales funnel? Well, if you're wondering how to test and optimize your ads on the LinkedIn Campaign Manager, I've got some tips for you. See, testing different elements of your campaign is crucial to getting better results and making data-driven decisions. Now, I will tell you as a purely creative person, I don't care about the data, but I've got people who do. But running experiments and testing on LinkedIn has not always been easy. It takes a lot of work, it's been pretty challenging until recently. Last month, they secretly, super quietly, because no one's talking about it, released a new tool in their campaign manager, and it's a built-in A-B testing tool. This allows you to split test in a single campaign. For clarity, by the way, I call this split testing, and many times they they call it A-B testing. I might call it both, A-B or split testing. They're the same thing. So if you hear me reference both of them, just understand where that's coming from. Anyway, 
So now you can experiment with different um, ad placements, creative elements, targeting strategies, and really figure out what works best for you in your advertising. For me, it's all about making the best use of your resources and investing in what delivers the best results. So how do you set up an A-B test in LinkedIn? Hit the pause button on the podcast right now. Get something to take notes and I'll tell you. It's really easy. Okay, I'll just wait for you. Go ahead. Okay, you're back. First, you want to start by configuring the test settings and giving it a unique name and then choose the variable that you want to A, B or split test. Next, you're going to set a budget, schedule and all the rest of the details for the test. Then you're going to build two test ad campaigns that are identical except for the variable element you want to test. This could be the, the ad format, the target, the placement. Um, you can set up shared settings once and then the campaign manager will automatically apply them to both versions. Once you've designed your ads, it's now time to build the A-B test variant. Depending on what you're testing, you're going to create two similar ads with slight differences, either in you know, the visual or the headline or the body copy. It could even be the landing page that it goes to. You can A-B test those off the ads using the, right? So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Remember, it's critical to frame your A-B test with a hypothesis. Pinpoint what you want to learn and anticipate the outcome. That way, you can experiment with the right variables to get the test to deliver the best results possible. Remember, when you A-B test and it's done right, you can review the results, pick your winner, and then A-B test off of your winner, and you can get tighter and tighter and tighter in your messaging, and it just gets better. Hey, if you like the Ad Nerds podcast, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen, and make sure you give me feedback on whether I was too harsh on Lipton, okay? Give it a five-star rating and a great review. I'd appreciate it. That's the Ad Nerds podcast for Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. Spanky out. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.